From difficult accents causing too much of a headache for superstars, to one particular turkey killing off all hopes of being a leading name. These actors all learn the hard way that you can only polish a cinematic turd so much. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 8 actors that were so bad they had to quit movies. Number 8. Hugh Grant, a massive turkey leads to leading man roles drying up. You'd be forgiven for laughing at the thought of British cinematic heartthrob Hugh Grant ever genuinely struggling to land the part of leading light in just about any production in his immediate sphere. But as he himself admitted, one particular late noughties dud actually resulted in him being forced to give up on any hopes of being a leading man again in the near future. Said role came in the form of his part in 2009 flop Did You Hear About The Morgans? opposite Sarah Jessica Parker. And when talking to the LA Times later down the road, Grant would note, Whether I wanted to or not after that, the days of being a very well-paid leading man were suddenly gone overnight. It was slightly embarrassing, but it left life free for other things. Slammed for an overall lack of chemistry with his co-star, Did You Hear About The Morgans would turn out to be Grant's last big screen project for three years. Has he struggled to make himself relevant in the wake of this all-out rom-com flop? Thankfully, brilliant turns in the likes of The Gentleman and Paddington 2 have pulled new life back into Grant's flailing career, as he settles nicely into a new character-based chapter on the big screen. Number 7. Greta Garbo, a two-faced flop leads to a star given up. Classed by many as one of the finest actors ever committed to the big screen, Greta Garbo's stellar career that had already racked up three Academy Award nominations over the course of a gripping decade on our cinema screens from 1930 onwards, was suddenly cut short on the back of one unexpectedly disastrous project. Playing the part of Karen Borg Blake slash Catherine Borg in George Cukor's Two-Faced Woman, the film was a clear attempt to build on the star's undoubted success in projects like Ninochka, another rom-com that had resulted in one of Garbo's aforementioned Oscar nods. Yet the results weren't anywhere near as successful this time around, critics absolutely slamming the picture that Garbo would later refer to as My Grave. On the back of such a humiliating trouncing by the reviewers, Kuko would go on record to admit that classing the film as the one that killed her career would be a grotesque oversimplification. But he still conceded, It certainly threw her, but I think that what really happened was that she just gave up. She didn't want to go on. Sure enough, she didn't, and the lackluster two-faced woman would act as this cinematic legend's final ever movie role at just 36 years of age. Number 6. Eddie Murphy – Too Many Bad Films Force a Break Much like Hugh Grant earlier on, Eddie Murphy is another star who found himself being forced onto the sidelines on the back of a truly terrible piece of work, or in this case, a string of sh movies. Though he'd very much been received as one of the freshest and most charismatic forces of his generation throughout the 80s, 90s, and even a decent part of the 2000s, the late 2000s brought with it some absolute sledgehammers to the comedy powerhouse's career. The likes of Norbit, Meet Dave, Imagine That, and A Thousand Words were all received very poorly, and that last flop, along with winning Worst Actor of the Decade, Razzie, ultimately led to Murphy actually taking a break away from the movie-making spotlight. As he would reflect on Mark Maron's WTF podcast, Mother Effers gave me the worst actor ever, Razzie, so I thought maybe it's time to take a break. Said break would last a total of four years, with Mr. Church once again not making many waves in 2016. However, a further three years later, Murphy would return, this time to much more critical acclaim with his work on Dolomite Is My Name, even coming home with the Razzie Redeemer Award for his troubles. How's that for character development? Number 5. Thomas Kretschmann, a monotone voice can't be overcome in Hellboy 2. Sometimes, through no fault of their own, an actor simply isn't the right fit for the role they've been initially cast in. That was unfortunately the case when it came time to bring Hellboy 2 the Golden Army's ectoplasmic entity Johann Strauss to life in Guillermo del Toro's mystical comic book sequel, Thomas Kreshman ultimately being nudged to the sidelines in favour of Seth MacFarlane. As the director would reveal, Kreshman's vocal quality was sadly in the exact same range as the gas mechanical sound effects used for the Strauss suit and voice. So Thomas's voice came out monotone no matter what performance and direction Del Toro tried. Applauding McFarlane's supreme vocal versatility upon recasting the steaming role, it's clear that Kretschmann just wasn't up to the task of bringing life and excitement to the character of Strauss in a way that could justify Del Toro turning down the chance to work with this family guy. He didn't exactly deal a fatal blow to his career, mind, with Kretschmann going on to appear in the MCU as Baron Von Strucker and recently signing on to appear in the latest Indiana Jones
Thrones film too. Not too shabby at all. Number 4. Katie Holmes, a Golden Raspberry nomination leads to Batman Departure. Seen by many as the film that proved to be the catalyst for all things gritty and gloomy when it pertains to the superhero genre that eventually truly boomed from 2005 onwards, it's often overlooked that not every single element of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins was received as warmly as Christian Bale's gripping bat or the flick's overall stunning realism. Picking up a Golden Raspberry nomination for Worst Supporting Actress for her work as Rachel Dawes, Katie Holmes evidently wasn't in too much of a rush to return to Gotham on the back of a wave of lukewarm reviews aimed at her Bruce Wayne love interest. In the end, Holmes was said to have turned down the chance to step back into the Rachel saddle for The Dark Knight, with the star instead opting to wash her hands of the poorly received character in favour of starring an eventual flop Mad Money opposite Diane Keaton and Queen Latifah. Clearly still sensing some potential in Holmes as Dawes though, Nolan did still go on record to state, Katie wasn't available for the role, which I wasn't very happy about. But these things happen, and I was very, very fortunate that Maggie Gyllenhaal was able to take it over. Weren't we all? Number 3. Dennis Hopper An unfortunate agreement is fulfilled after the first day of The Truman Show. Creative differences have been known to cause more than a few impactful cinematic ripples over the years, and said issue was once again cited when it came to the sudden departure of Apocalypse Now star Dennis Hopper on Peter Weir's 1998 drama hit The Truman Show. Depending on which story you believe, Hopper was said to have exited the project a few days in on the back of not really feeling the role of Kristoff. Even telling Entertainment Weekly, I couldn't really find a hook for the character. Others were quick to report that Hopper had actually been given the boot due to the star having an agreement in place in his contract that stated that the director and producers behind the flick weren't satisfied with his performance early on, they could find a suitable replacement. Whatever the reason, Hopper's work just wasn't doing it for either the actor and team behind the project, or both. So the mighty Ed Harris was drafted in as a late replacement, with the star picking up an Oscar nod for Best Supporting Actor for his last-minute performance in the Jim Carrey starring reality TV dramedy. Number 2. Kel O'Neill struggles to give Paul Thomas Anderson what he wants It takes a rather brave and admirably honest actor to admit that they simply couldn't fulfill their end of the bargain when the time came to bring their work to the movie-making party. And that's precisely what went down when Kel O'Neill rocked up on set to begin work on Paul Thomas Anderson's deeply atmospheric Eric There Will Be Blood as Eli's Sunday, alluding to how the relationship between an actor and their director is so vital in producing captivating performances and features as a whole, O'Neill would recall to Vulture, For some reason, even though every actor I know had a relationship with Paul that was super positive, and where they did their best work, that just didn't happen with me. Going further, the actor would reveal that an actor should, with every ounce of their humanity, be attempting to give the director what he or she wants, and I recall going in and out on whether I could really do that. That. Eventually, O'Neill's struggles, contrary to the belief that he was actually intimidated by Daniel Day-Lewis on set, would pave the way for Paul Dano being asked to play both Paul and Eli Sunday. Number 1. Reese Witherspoon couldn't pull off a convincing Scottish accent for Brave Accents have been known to make or break many a movie performance over the years. So it's understandable to hear of an actor having second thoughts about a role upon discovering just how hard a certain dialect is to pull off. In the case of Reese Witherspoon's brief attempts to get a grip of a Scottish twang for a certain Pixar fantasy flick released in 2012, by the name of Brave, the Legally Blonde star clearly decided the accent wasn't worth the trouble, revealing her difficulties when tackling the distinct Gaelic tones of Princess Merida, the leading animated lady of the Scottish family flick. Witherspoon, though not specifically referencing Brave outright, would confess on ITV's Lorraine, I tried to do a Scottish accent once. It was bad. I had to quit the movie. It's not my finest moment. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Witherspoon was very much attached to appear in Brave for a time, and co-director Mark Andrews noted how she was working very hard to get the accent down. But the actor clearly felt the Scottish mountain was one too tall for even her to climb, and stepped aside for Kelly MacDonald later down the road. And that's our list. Know of any other actors that were so bad they had to quit movies? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from WhatCulture.com. Thank you very much for clicking on this video today, and I'm sure I'll see your lovely face very, very soon.